Today on Dead Dodge Garage, it's this 1961 Chrysler 300G. The G stands for great, or in this case, Gary. This fantastic unit belongs to Rocket Tom's twin brother, Gary Hergert. Man, it's pretty. Now I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't really know a whole lot about full-size Chrysler cars from this time. But what I do know is the Chrysler 300 letter car is something special. The Chrysler 300 letter series got its start in 1955 with the C300. A full-size Chrysler car stripped down of any extra trim and equipped with a high horsepower dual quad Hemi engine. The C300 is actually on my personal short list of cars I'd like to own someday. There's just something special about those. The letter series used on these cars is actually a little strange. For one thing, as I just mentioned, the original car was the C300. The 1956 car was the 300B. For 1957, it was called the 300C, and it proceeded accordingly. From the jump, the letter car was supposed to be the higher horsepower, stripped down, big car. It was still nicely apportioned, with a nice interior and what have you, but it just had that brawler look. The basic body of this 300G, for example, is essentially the same as another 61 Chrysler. Although a New Yorker or Newport would say that here, and there are other pieces of trim used. The G just has a single spear there. Despite being a stripped down performance car, the inside of the 300G is quite nice. For example, the gauge is with panelescent backlighting. You'll also find four bucket seats and a full length console. The front seats <coughs> do this. Well, that's kind of nice. If one is familiar with the 66 and seven charger, this will look quite familiar as they also have a full length console, at least in 66 and four bucket seats. And although the gauge cluster is completely different with four pods being found in the charger, the backlighting is the same. It even uses the same little power pack thingy. Wow, the clock works. This car is equipped with a console mounted tachometer. Note, despite being equipped with a center console, the shifter is not found there. This car is equipped with a push button, iron three-speed torque flight transmission. Here's the real party piece of the G though, the 413 long ram engine. Now the original C300 of course was powered by a first generation Hemi because that's the V8 engine Chrysler was using at the time. The Hemi went away for financial reasons after 1958, and it was replaced in 59 with this, the 413 Taldec Big Block. Now the average muscle car owner might not know much about a 413, but if you know anything about a 440, it's essentially the same animal with a smaller bore. The original Hemi powered letter cars had dual quads, but they were here. For this Taldec wedge engine, they moved outboard onto these long ram manifolds, which if you ask me, are one of the coolest things ever fitted to a car. Editor's note. That's right, I'm also the editor. Um, the carburetors were in line on the 1959 wedge engine. Sitting on those manifolds are dual Carter carburetors. I believe they're 600 CFM units. Two 600 CFM carbs, that's a lot. Here you can see at least some of the Rube Goldberg-esque device that makes the throttles work. There's actually another section below the manifold that connects to the pedal. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. And obviously you need to make sure they're synchronized correctly for this to work. So that's a bit of an adjustment procedure. This long ram engine is rated for 375 horsepower. Not bad for 1961. There are different versions of this same basic engine package available depending on the line and the year. It could come in all sorts of different colors. This black engine with red manifolds and gold air cleaners, very attractive. And of course there was the Plymouth version of this called the Sonoramic Commando, which is amazing. That one was a red engine with a whole bunch of gold on the top. The purpose of the long ram manifold was a tuned runner length that would come in at a given RPM. The longer the manifold, the lower that RPM. It gives something of a supercharging effect. These manifolds have a divider which goes all the way from the carburetor to the cylinder head. The later version of these, called short rams, are actually exactly the same length, but the center divider ends right about here. That manifold tunes in at a higher RPM. The 61 has a flat trunk instead of the faux spare tire that 60 would have. 60 also had brake lights here instead of reverse lights. The 61 300G still has fins. 
in 62, they were removed and the quarter panel kind of has this shape. Personally, I kind of like the 62, although some people call it a plucked chicken. Of course, fins went out of style in the early 60s, but I think we can all agree they're pretty sweet. Okay, I do have to say, I've always found that shape a little funky, but you know, it's cool. This particular G actually has a bit of an interesting story. When Gary bought it, it was lipstick red with white interior, which of course was not correct. He bought the car and drove it a few times. One day, he parked it in his garage after a long day at work. He had to decide, do I go to bed or do I watch Game of Thrones? Luckily, instead of sleep, he chose Game of Thrones because a little while later, he started smelling smoke coming from his garage. He came out to find that smoke emanating out of the dash and engine compartment of this car. Unfortunately, he didn't have a fire extinguisher handy, but he did have a hose and he chose to try and put it out with that. Thankfully, he did manage to do so, but not before the paint on the hood and in the engine compartment was ruined. Everything in this area, which unfortunately had till that point been finished in the original paint, was cooked, along with the wiring. Hmm, coffee's getting down there. There's a lesson here, folks. Disconnect the batteries on your classic Mopars overnight. Oh, while we're back under the hood, I gotta show you this. These are factory cutouts and block-off plates for a long ram car. You have to have those to change the spark plugs. There's just no other way to do it. If you happen to be looking at a car that's equipped with long rams, but it doesn't have these cutouts, you'll know it's not factory. Also admire the roughness of that. Yep, typical Chrysler. Pretty sure they just did that with like a cutoff wheel or shears, something cheesy. After the fire with the paint damage, Gary decided time to restore it back to the correct color. And here it is. The interior was also redone in the correct tan. But there's one thing left over to tell you about the history. And it's this staining on the dash. That's from water from hosing this thing down, trying to put the fire out. It hasn't been painted, it's still there. I really like that. Just about everything else in here you see has been restored and is in excellent shape. Especially these seat covers, which are very special. And for that reason, I have to do that to drive it. Speaking of which, if you wanna know more about the 300G, pop over to Jay Leno's channel because he's got a black one and it's pretty sweet. What I wanna know is, What's this thing like to drive? The neutral safety adjustment, a little off. To release the parking brake, you actually have to push that lever down. Apparently if you reef on it like the later ones, it'll just break. Of course you have to use the parking brake because the push button does not have a park position. These fancy irreplaceable seat covers are made of leather. And I know that, because it smells like dead cow in here. Ugh, we appear to have a traffic jam. A broken 70s Chrysler cop car. Just another day here at Rocket. Ah, it's a big car, but it's not that big. Right? Oh yeah. I will try not to hit anything, but hopefully Gary's up on his insurance. One of the fancy features on the G, vacuum assist brakes. And they're actually not bad. The first generation of brake booster that's physically mounted behind the master cylinder, I found those to be extremely touchy. This feels pretty good. It does make filling up the master cylinder an absolute nightmare, but that's another story. The car is fully warmed up, has the correct amount of oil pressure, correct amount of charging and the fuel gauge now works again one of the many nice features on this car electric windows and they seem to work note the dash mounted rear view mirror yet another funky feature found on chrysler's of this era Ooh. it's got pickup i'll tell you that in the early days of power assisted steering the power assist was excessive, and this car is no exception to that. It's very vague. There's a little bit of play and wobble in the middle of the steering range, but you get used to that. Whee! We might need to adjust the brakes a bit. Note it's tending to pull left there. 
very common with front drum brakes. Small adjustments, differences in braking between the two sides. It's not ideal. Oh, listen to that. It didn't kick down to second. I think that would make quite a bit of difference. Of course, the early torque flight does have a kick down, but it's only at full throttle. Well, we gotta test it, right? Ah, too much timing, Gary. Did you hear all that noise? I'm gonna select second manually and roll into it. peculiar thing. They're over here. No stick. Of course they had sticks before 61 and they had sticks later but for some reason they thought it should be on the dash. While this doesn't have the square steering wheel of some weird Exner designs, it does have a flattened off bottom. Probably for leg clearance getting in and out. the heater core leak to make sure I'm not pushing it too hard. <sighs> nice. Well, you know, it could be related to that, I suppose, judging by all the coolant coming out there, so. Ah, easy fix. Oh, here's another cool detail. The 61 only wide fin alternator. Big enough to jam your fingers in and tear the tips of them off. Oh, I did notice the windshield washer hose is just sitting here. I think there should be a bag. Ah, we're here at the railroad spot again. I don't think those tanks are gonna move anytime soon. Man, this thing's cool. I think the reason I just feel out of place in these cars, I feel like I don't know much about them. It's because I was born an A-body guy. And even though I own a, well, an oversized mid-sized charger, I still feel I'm an A-body guy at heart. Gary and Tom, on the other hand, well, they're six and a half feet tall and they don't fit in A-bodies, so. Cars like this, more of a natural choice. There's still lots of cool details to find, like these badges on the trunk and tail panel. And of course, the rocket thruster reverse lights. Pretty cool. Gary's car was actually visiting us at Rocket this time because there was a bit of an issue with the rear brakes and axles and, well, it turns out someone had done some monkeying around and it's got a later eight and three quarter center chunk. And that's a problem because while they're technically interchangeable, these earlier tapered axle setups are quite a bit different. The block in the center chunk, for example, is a different length. And so we had one heck of a time getting the bearing spaced correctly. My coworker Evan actually had to custom make some spacer shims to go back there and get the end play correct. You don't want those axles jammed together all the time like they were in this car, because when things start to heat up and bind in there, well, you're gonna have a bad time. All right, better limp this thing back to the shop and. Tighten that hose up. Then we can test the horsepower again. Little temperamental. In all likelihood, the pinging issue is high compression and not so great fuel quality. Oh yeah, and of course this car predates safety, so there's not even a lap belt to make me feel secure. Oh yeah, hard top mode, engage. The torque of the big block's great. Even when you're not hammering on it, it still pulls you right along like a modern car. I can tell you it's not exactly a cornering machine. I think this crazy gauge arrangement is called like the Astrodome gauge cluster or something. It's neat, whatever it is. Actually, the more I look at it, the more I think it's some strange kind of alien. Trying to compare this to the 55 C300 really wouldn't work very well. I mean, the underpinnings are really completely different, but if the 55 drives anything like this, I'm gonna love it. The other thing I drive often that has a swiveling seat, the LLV mail truck. Just like the LLV, this one shifts side to side. Lovely. Man, 
that initial rush of torque from a stop almost popped my back and I wasn't even trying. Just another day at Rocket. Everything's going good. While I was being dragged back here in that 70 satellite parts car, I was reminded that we have this, a plucked chicken. Obviously the grill is different. And obviously this is a sedan, not a two door hardtop, but the rest of the body is essentially the same. So here's what they did to delete the fin. It actually kind of has the impression of a fin, but it's not so pokey. And of course they redesigned the tail lights and tail panel to match. They also eliminated the ribs on the trunk lid, but it's still the same basic shape as the 60, which would have had that spare tire on there. Dang it, there's actually also a 60 here. This one being a four door hardtop, which is cool. But the trunk lid's gone, so I can't show you that. Eh, typical. Eh, hey, while we're at it, I guess we'll look at this. This is what the letter car would look like in 63 and 4. Huh. Funny enough, that's what a letter car looks like in 65. The 300L. But that's a video for another day. The coolant should stay in now, so... We gotta test the horsepower at least once. It's a little larger than what I'm used to. Yeah, I am. Now, if you want to do sporty stuff, you can manually shift the push button. Some people call this a telegraph transmission. Personally, I think that's silly, but I understand. Pulling out on this road is scary and like my Subaru. It's something nice. It's downright terrifying. about all for this look at Gary's 300G. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Let me know what you guys think about these things. Are they muscle cars? Or are they just boats? Would you like to see more of them? We've got more sea bodies around, so that's not a problem. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And remember, the universe is shaped exactly like the Earth. If you go straight long enough, you'll end up where you were. Yeah, it's just way too much mustache. Great, now I need one of these things. My garage is already full.